What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Palantir stock, ticker symbol PLTR, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Monday, March 25th. All right, guys, Palantir stock here on Friday finished the day down 31 cents, minus 1.27%. It is flat in the after hours, so nothing to be concerned with there. Let's get started here, trying to pull out as much possible bias as we can from all the available data, the charts, the volume profile, the options. Let's take a look at it all. Starting with our daily ritual, the volume profile analysis here on the five minute chart. Listen, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. My goal here is to hit 10,000 by the end of April, and I think we can pull that off with your help, so appreciate you jumping aboard. Let's dive in. This is where we can really pull out a little bit of hidden bias um, that isn't so obvious or really even visible by simply looking at the price action. Now, what we need to do is circle movement in the stock that is the most interesting to look at the volume profile to see, okay, is anything out of context here? I want to look at this move, and you know what? That move, that little pop and fade that we had intraday, and that's really about it. You know, it was a little bit of a slower day, at least intraday on Palantir on Friday, but let's see what we can pull out here. We had that typical, very contextual, higher volume opening bar. This part is interesting. We typically see a bit more of a fade. We actually saw consecutively a little bit higher volume bars well into the day, like an hour into the trading day, but it's so mixed up between red and green bars. There's really not like three or four consecutive out of context green bars or red bars that really give us an idea. So that open is kind of a wash intraday on this move, this little pop and fade that we got intraday, we did see a little bit of a pop on that that higher bar, right? And a quick fade. There's there's nothing there though that's out of context to really give us an idea of bias, at least using the volume profile. So listen, it's interesting, we tried, but let's move on to see if we can pull anything out from a few other places. Let's take a look at the self-fulfilling prophecy psychological levels that I'm paying attention to come Monday. Now, on Friday, Palantir rode that 200 period on the 30 minute essentially all day, and it held it actually rather well. It was a bit sloppy, but it's never going to be perfect. So I call that a, a rather impressive hold, though we didn't close too far above it and we rode it through the after hours, even though we like to take after hours with a grain of salt around here because volume is so low. But here's what I'm watching specific to the 30 minute come Monday. Listen, bulls. We're currently riding that 200 period. I would love to see a big high volume bounce off of that level. Again, big volume pushing up toward that descending 50 period. It's less than 1% away. I would love to see a reclaim on high volume of that 50 period. But again, a breakthrough on big volume, a retest on much smaller volume, a fade of volume on the retest, and then boom, on the bounce yet again above average volume. That's very, very definitive, at least in the short term, uh, from a bullish perspective, that we're reclaiming that level and, and seeing that now as support. In addition to that, it would likely force that 50 period to flatten out, if not curl back upside, which is never bad to see if you're a bull. Now listen, bears, really simple for you guys here. Any upside test of that white line, that 50 period, I don't mind what volume it would test on, as long as you guys saw a high volume rejection while that 50 period r remains on the descent, okay? But really your goal on Monday, at least on the 30 minutes specifically, is to crack down below the 200 period, but you see that wasn't enough. I'm not talking about three minutes, right? That means nothing. I want to see a high volume crack downside, low volume retest, and then Boom, above average volume rejection, hard, a definitive break and hold beneath that 200 period on the 30 minute for you bears. That's your ideal come Monday. Okay, let's take a look now at the four hour chart and see here. This one's very in play, so we have to take a peek. We currently find ourselves bulls beneath that 50 period. Okay, so you bears, any retest of that 50 period, again, it's on the descent. You just want to maintain that as a resistance level. High volume rejections on any retests is your ideal on the four hour. Bulls, high volume break and hold. Okay, rip upside through, retest, and bounce away from that level, heading back up toward that $25 region, ideally, come Monday. Okay, this is, listen, that 50 period on the four hour chart, everybody has that same indicator on this same chart. It is one of the most common, 
It's essentially the most common indicator you could slap on a four hour chart, and everyone watches the four hour chart. So this is very psychological, right? It's a very self fulfilling prophecy mentality. That's how I look at all TA because it's effective. But let's take a look at kind of the big dog of all the charts, the daily. If you if you skip one chart, you know, don't skip the daily. Okay. Now, it's not going to show after hours movement, but there really was no after hours movement, so that's fine. Monday on Palantir, Monday's the battle of that $24 whole, whole dollar level, right? Now, Bulls, we were able to hold that on Friday, but I want to be able to hold that continuously because understand the Bears are looking to crack 24. Bears, you guys want this in the 23s as soon as possible. 24 is currently a support level or at least a potential support level, bears, you want that to crack downside, retest, and turn into a resistance, whereas bulls, you know, it, it, holding it as support is great, but ideal is pulling away, putting some distance in between the stock price and the whole dollar of 24, heading back up toward that, that real level, the, the most interesting area, you know, 25, that round number, which is about a 3.5% move away. 2550 is also a technical level and technical levels technical levels tend to turn into psychological levels that 2550 area is about you know 5.75 um about five and a half five point seven five percent away so bulls here's the story on monday hold 24 ideally use 24 as a potential trampoline to make a big high volume push up toward that 25 dollar region okay it, of course, does, it's not necessary that it breaks and holds 25 in a single day, but that would be great, wouldn't it? All right. But understand, it's a little bit of a, of a larger move. Bears, a crack downside below 24 bucks. It's not just enough to crack downside. You guys have to make a hold first, right? Which ideally requires that retest and rejection. That sets you guys up, you bears, to potentially utilize 24 as kind of a ceiling, a hard rejection level to head down and make a test of that $23, not only psychological round number, but also technical level that we've had drawn for quite a while here on Palantir. Now, two more things that we need to take a look at for additional bias. What is the chain pricing in, in terms of volatility, expectation, expected move, and then we'll take a look at the actual directional bias out of the chain. So the next expiration here on Palantir is, is Thursday, March 28th. Now, the expected move on that expiration, which is a technical term, this is priced from the implied volatility, priced from the pricing of the options, the expected move by Thursday close is plus or minus $1.15. So if we take a look at the chart and we look, okay, there's no earnings or anything between now and then. So if we look at this from kind of a primitive mentality and just say, okay, what's a buck fifteen divided by four? The options chain is kind of pricing in an average of like 28, 29 cents plus or minus per trading day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? Now, something to consider when looking at that expected move is that is the expected one standard deviation range of the stock between now and Thursday, a buck 15. So if you're someone who disagrees with that for whatever reason, maybe you think it's going to be less. Maybe you look at, at selling some contracts, you know, like sell to open, right? Take the short side of the contracts. Not, I don't mean puts. I mean selling calls or selling puts. Maybe you look to do that to try to capitalize on less realized volatility than expected volatility. If you're someone who's like, man, I think Palantir is going to move more than 28 or 29 cents a day, a buck 15 by Thursday. Well, then maybe you're somebody who decides to buy contracts with your directional bias, okay? to potentially try to capitalize on an outsized move. Speaking of directional bias, let's take a look at the chain and see what the options traders are thinking heading into this Monday. This is all from Friday, right? So this is how they position themselves heading into Monday. We had 234,600 total contracts traded. That's a decent sample size. 123,000 of those were calls and 111,500 were puts. So we are seeing it's not overwhelming at all, but a slight call side bias on the overall call per ratio and in that short term speculation category, the short term speculators, those short term bets being placed, the zero to 20 delta range, we had just under 42,000 calls and just under 58,000 puts. So interestingly, we're seeing a slight call side bias on the overall ratio, likely coming from those closer to at the money and in the money contracts mostly that at the money delta range. But in the short term speculator category, we actually are seeing a slight put side bias. 
as always, this is one factor of many, so make sure your risk is managed, but that's what the, the options data is telling us here from Friday. Listen, if you guys want to get grandfathered in at the current rate for the Wrench Capital Gold server, that's where I send out all my personal scalp setup alerts every day, my swing trade setup alerts as they come along. In play, stock alerts, those are stocks that are demanding the attention of, of scalp-style traders like at, at this very moment. I alert those as well as I'm watching my scanners. Unusual options activity to kind of try to track what the whales are doing. I've been tracking that for years and years now. And of course, I'm working with my platinum one on one members every single day. You can take a look at that at the link in the pinned comment. If you got value out of this video, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one.